Hello, I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House. So in today's hydraulic ram pump video lesson, we're going to be learning about drive pipes. Now this is the pipe that you put in the creek from the topmost point and it takes water to the pump. So it drives the pump. Now the material that you can make uh, your drive pipe out of can be like this piece, black flex tube, or you can use regular Schedule 40 PVC or even a steel pipe. Now it is recommended that you keep the drive pipe as secure as possible because as the pressure wave, which we'll learn about later, enters the pipe and comes back and forth, it will cause jump in the pipe. Hey Wally. <laughs> ah, you're wet. <laughs> so let's begin talking about the drive pipe. In this example, I'm going to be using black flex pipe. Now it's very important to note that the size pipe you use must be the same size as the first check valve in your pump. If it's not, then you won't have an operating pump. So for this example, I'm gonna be using a half inch pump. So I've got a half inch black flex tube. Now one thing to consider is the length of drive pipe. In this setup, I'm going to be using a 100 foot pipe. Drive pipe length is very important. On a smaller pump, such as the half inch pump, I'm able to use up to about 200 feet of drive pipe. Now on the larger pumps, you are not able to use as much because there's more volume of water. So I would recommend on all sizes of pump, try and keep your drive pipe length within 100 feet. But if it's too short, you also do not have the pressure wave that you need. So try to keep the low end at 15 feet. So 15 feet to 100 feet is how long you can have your drive pipe. So the reason you would need different lengths of pipe for your specific setup is to achieve something called feet of head. And that is the difference between where you have your source coming from to where the pump is located. So it's the difference in height. So two feet, three feet, however far the drop is from the top to the bottom. So if you need, let's say, five feet of head, you may need to have a hundred foot drive pipe to achieve that distance. Now, if you have a need of, say, five feet, but it's you have a waterfall, you could probably get by with a 30 foot pipe. So it just depends upon your specific setup. For this example, I'm gonna be using this pool of water as my source. This is just a creek flowing at about 30 gallons per minute. Now I've got the end of my drive pipe here and I'm gonna be sticking this into the water, but you'll notice there's some rocks making this little pool. It is possible to siphon out of this pool to start the ram pump. So it doesn't have to be coming from, say, the bottom of a tank. All of that is possible as well. To prevent debris from entering into my drive pipe, I've got this hardware cloth with a um, cinch down here that I can put over the drive pipe. Now, the reason you don't just put screen directly over the drive pipe is because it reduces the flow and the pump will not operate. So I just simply put this over the end of the drive pipe and tighten this down. And that will prevent leaves and bugs and rocks and all kinds of debris from entering into my pump. The drive pipe is now ready to be put into the water. I'm gonna use a rock here to simply hold the drive pipe in the water. You have to make sure that there is going to be no air entering the pipe because any little bit of air will stop the pump. If you're gonna be using flex pipe like this, be sure to occasionally put rocks on the drive pipe or some other form of heavy object to prevent bounce from happening when the pressure wave enters. Now that we've placed our drive pipe into the source, it's time to get this thing primed, meaning it has water inside the pipe and it's ready to be hooked up to the pump. Now I have to warn you, this is oftentimes the most time consuming step 
of the entire process. I've been known to spend over an hour getting this pipe primed. And a lot of times it's because I'm siphoning water into the pipe from uh, a good sized tank or a pond or whatever the source may be. So what I like to do is take the valve from the pump here and I screw in one of these pieces that will fit into this flex pipe like that. This now gives me a valve that I can open and close. Now the larger the drive pipe is, the more difficult it is to get water siphoned into the pipe. That's why for this example I'm going to be using the half inch pipe to make it a more speedy process. So with this valve I'm going to have it open and I'm going to try to suck water out of the source and get the pipe started with the siphon effect. Now if the pipe was really big you may have to uh, suck water in, close the valve, take a breath, and then open the valve and suck again to keep pulling water into the pipe. Um, because the more volume you have, the more difficult it is. So let's try this and see if I can get water pulled out of our source. Oftentimes you can hold your finger here at the source and if you feel air being blown through, then you know water is coming through. The half inch pipe is usually the easiest to get water through. Now like I said before, if there's any air in the pipe, the pump will stop. So be sure to let this run until there is no more air in the pipe. Sometimes this can take a couple of minutes. This drive pipe is primed and ready to be installed onto the pump. In order to get your pump installed onto the drive pipe, be sure to close the valve and then take the threaded union here and you're just going to put them together and that should screw on there pretty easy. Make sure your pump is straight up and down. And now you're ready to begin priming your pump. Well, now you know the basics of installing the drive pipe for the hydraulic ram pump. So let's recap what we've learned. Use a screen over the intake, but not directly over the intake or it will not have enough flow. Make a cone out so you have enough uh, water entering into the pipe. Next, be sure to put rocks on top of the drive pipe so the pressure wave doesn't cause bounce and loss of efficiency. Remember to use a valve on the end of the pipe next to the pump to help with siphoning water into the pipe. Remember you cannot have air inside the pipe or the pump will not work at all. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'm Seth Johnson with Land a House and I will see you in the next one. Bye.